How great was Ronaldo at Manchester United? Well, opposition fullbacks hated him because he would relish any opportunity to beat a defender. He wasn't just trying to beat the defender, he wanted the opposition to dread every time he had the ball. He could score from any area of the pitch, even from places nobody would think to even shoot from. If you fouled him, well, good luck because his free kicks were lethal. If you didn't get to witness how great Ronaldo was at Manchester United, oh my, you missed out. But don't worry, we got you. Stay with us as we look at how Ronaldo grew from promising young talent to, in 2006, reach world-class level and never look back. First, let's start at where this journey begun. In August 2003, Sporting Lisbon played a friendly match against Manchester United, a game expected to be just another preseason tune-up for the English Giants. But what unfolded was far from ordinary. A 17-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo took the field and turned it into his stage, delivering a performance that left everyone in awe. Right from the start, Ronaldo amazed the crowd with his electric pace, mesmerizing dribbles, and fearless attacking. His impact was so profound that John O'Shea, one of United's seasoned defenders, was left bewildered as Ronaldo danced past him with ease. One particular moment stood out. Ronaldo picked up the ball on the wing and, with a series of stepovers, sent O'Shea one way before cutting inside and delivering a pinpoint cross. The performance was so impressive that by the end of the match, United's players were urging Sir Alex Ferguson to sign the young prodigy. According to reports, Ferguson said, It was one of those performances that you just don't forget. I knew we had to sign him. Final negotiations with Sporting Lisbon were quickly arranged, and soon after, Ronaldo joined Manchester United, signing a deal worth £12.24 million, a record fee for a teenager at the time. Ronaldo initially wanted to keep his number 28 from Sporting, but Sir Alex insisted he take the iconic number 7, worn by legends like George Best, Eric Cantona, and David Beckham. This was more than just a number. It was a mantle of greatness that Ronaldo was now expected to carry. Making his debut on August 16, 2003 against Bolton Wanderers, Ronaldo immediately turned heads. Coming on as a substitute, he dazzled the crowd with his flair, pace, and trickery. In less than 30 minutes, he had Bolton's defense in tatters, earning a standing ovation from the Old Trafford faithful, a rare accolade for a debutante. Throughout the 2003-2004 season, defenders across the Premier League found it impossible to relax when Ronaldo was on the ball. His quick feet, unpredictable dribbling, and willingness to take on opponents made him a constant threat. One of his standout performances came in November 2003 against Portsmouth, where he scored his first ever goal for United, a free kick that snuck past everyone and found the back of the net. By the end of the season, Ronaldo had scored six goals and provided nine assists in 40 appearances. His contributions were instrumental in United's FA Cup triumph, where his performances earned him the Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year award. This season was just the beginning as he would go up another level in the following season. In his second season, Ronaldo's development continued at an accelerated pace. His confidence grew, and with it came greater consistency in his performances. No longer just a flashy winger, Ronaldo began to show signs of becoming a key player for United. One of the most memorable moments of the 2004-2005 season was United's clash against Arsenal in October, a match that would end the Gunners' 49-match unbeaten run. Ronaldo played a crucial role in that victory, using his pace and trickery to torment Arsenal's defense. His relentless pressure and ability to win crucial free kicks were instrumental in United's 2-0 victory, with Ronaldo assisting in the build-up to the opening goal. This match was a turning point, both for the season and for Ronaldo, as it marked his evolution from a talented youngster to a player capable of influencing the biggest games. Ronaldo finished the season with 9 goals and 10 assists in 50 appearances. Despite upping both his goals and assists from the prior season, Ronaldo was still barely scratching the surface of his immense potential. The 2005-2006 season marked another significant step in Ronaldo's development. He began to focus more on achieving tangible results rather than merely entertaining the crowd. This shift in mindset saw him becoming a more direct and effective player, capable of turning matches in United's favor with moments of brilliance. 
Ronaldo's growing free kick prowess was on full display in February 2006 when he scored a thunderous free kick from 30 yards out against Fulham, a strike so powerful and precise that it left the goalkeeper with no chance. And by the end of the season, Ronaldo had tallied 12 goals and 8 assists in 47 appearances. Although United finished as runners-up in the Premier League, Ronaldo's contributions weren't unnoticed. His performances earned him a place in the PFA Team of the Year, and he won his second second Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year award. If you're enjoying what you're watching right now, drop a CR7 in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get back into it. The 2006-2007 season was a turning point in Ronaldo's career, a season that saw him break through into the ranks of the world's best players. His transformation was the result of relentless training, where he focused on building muscle to improve his once slender frame. The dedication paid off, as Ronaldo became the main man at United following the departure of Ruud van Nistelrooy. No longer in the shadow of the Dutch striker, Ronaldo seized the opportunity to take his game to another level. One of the standout moments of the season came in December 2006 when Ronaldo scored a stunning solo goal against Fulham, weaving through defenders before firing home. This goal was a statement. Ronaldo was not just a skillful winger, he was now a lethal finisher. March 17th against Bolton, his creativity was on display. For the opener, he dribbled all the way to the byline before cutting it back to Ji Sung Park, who would open the scoring. His second assist would come from a lightning-fast counterattack in which he would play a 1-2 with Wayne Rooney, before returning in the ball for him to score. The 2006-2007 season truly marked Ronaldo's emergence as a world-class player. He helped Manchester United secure their first Premier League title in four years, and also lifted the community shield. Individually, Ronaldo's brilliance was recognized recognized with a host of awards, including the PFA Players Player of the Year, PFA Young Player of the Year, FWA Footballer of the Year, and Premier League Player of the Season. He scored 23 goals and provided 20 assists. This season was the foundation for Ronaldo's ascent to global superstardom. The 2007-2008 season was where Cristiano Ronaldo reached heights never seen in the Premier League, establishing himself as the best player in the world. This was the season where everything came together for Ronaldo. His flair, skill, and goal-scoring ability were all on full display, making him a nightmare for defenders across Europe. Ronaldo's performances were nothing short of extraordinary, as he scored a staggering 42 goals and 49 appearances across all competitions. His domestic form was impeccable, leading Manchester United to the Premier League title with a series of match-winning performances. One of his most iconic goals came in January 2006 against Portsmouth, a free kick that defied the laws of physics. The ball dipped and swerved, leaving the goalkeeper rooted to the spot as it sailed into the top corner. A milestone moment came against Newcastle, as Manchester United had the chance to go top of the league table. Ronaldo would score his first career hat-trick. His first was a clever free kick that he put underneath the wall as they jumped. His second came off a Carlos Tevez pass that would set him up one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, which Ronaldo would convert. The hat-trick goal came after a bit of nifty footwork. Against Aston Villa, Ronaldo would put on a complete display. After opening the scoring with a clever back heel, he would go on to turn provider, first putting in a delightful cross for Carlos Tevez to nod home, and then sending Wayne Rooney one-on-one -on -one with an audacious back heel flick. Ronaldo's brilliance wasn't confined to the domestic stage. In the UEFA Champions League, he was instrumental in United's journey to the final. His eight goals made him the top scorer of the competition. In the final against Chelsea, he opened the scoring, rising above the Chelsea defenders to head home. Although Ronaldo missed his penalty during the shootout, United ultimately triumphed, securing their third European title. Ronaldo's performances throughout the campaign earned him the UEFA Club Footballer of the Year award, and his contributions to United's success in both the Premier League and the Champions League was unmatched. The 2007-2008 season was the pinnacle of Ronaldo's time in Manchester United. His performances were recognized with numerous individual accolades, including the Ball and Door, FIFA World Player of the Year, and UEFA Club Footballer of the Year. He also secured the Premier League Golden Boot with 31 goals and was named PFA Players Player of the Year, FWA Footballer of the Year, and Premier League Player of the Season. 
The 2008-2009 season marked the final chapter of Ronaldo's illustrious career at Manchester United. Although it was his last season at Old Trafford, Ronaldo continued to deliver world-class performances, showing why he was considered the best in the world. He scored 26 goals and provided 12 assists in 53 appearances, helping United secure a third consecutive Premier League title and reach the Champions League final for the second year in a row. One of the standout moments of the season was Ronaldo Ronaldo's stunning 40-yard strike against Porto in the Champions League quarterfinals. The goal was a reminder of Ronaldo's extraordinary ability to produce moments of magic on the biggest stage, and it helped United progress to the semifinals. His performances in the semifinals against Arsenal were equally impressive, where he scored two crucial goals that helped United to a 3-1 victory on the night and a 4-1 aggregate win. His first goal was a brilliant free kick that left the Arsenal goalkeeper stranded, and his second came at the end of a lightning-quick counterattack, where he finished off a sweeping move that he had started deep in United's half. The final, however, did not go as planned for Ronaldo and Manchester United. Facing Barcelona and Rome, United struggled to impose themselves, and despite Ronaldo's efforts, Barcelona emerged 2-0 winners. It was a disappointing end to the campaign, but Ronaldo's contributions throughout the tournament were undeniable. In the Premier League, Ronaldo's impact was equally significant. His goals and assists were crucial in securing United's third consecutive league title, further solidifying their dominance in English football. This season also saw Ronaldo add more silverware to his collection, including the FIFA Club World Cup and the League Cup. By the time he left for Real Madrid in the summer of 2009 for a world record transfer fee of £80 million, Ronaldo had achieved everything there was to achieve at the club level. During his six seasons at Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo scored an incredible 118 goals and provided 69 assists in 292 appearances. Ronaldo's impressive trophy haul includes winning three Premier League titles, one FA Cup, two League Cups, the UEFA Champions League, and the FIFA Club World Cup. Individually, he was awarded the Ballon d'Or, FIFA World Player of the Year, and numerous other accolades, including the Premier League Golden Boot and PFA Players Player of the Year. So, what do you think of Ronaldo and Manchester United? Do you want us to do the same thing for his time at Real Madrid? Let us know down below. With that, we come to an end. Until next time.